today it was a very important day at ESC here in Barcelona. There were many, many major issues discussed at the Congress. One of them was the um, microcirculation issue, coronary microvascular dysfunction, which was addressed in several sessions of the Congress. And this is very important because we are actually changing the paradigm in terms of angina, whereby angina is not uh, just a condition caused by coronary artery disease, obstructive coronary artery disease, but also by functional and structural abnormalities at the site of the coronary microvessels. And several, several speakers have actually highlighted the, the issue. The other major um, topic was, of course, the uh, uh, new guidelines for the management of acute myocardial infarct. And um, uh, this is going to be uh, the sort of the, the, the focus of, of lots of, of reports, I'm pretty sure, in the next few days. Uh, there have major, major changes in terms of how to manage acute MI, but the guidelines are more didactic. I think they were going to be a lot more helpful to, to the practicing um, physicians than the previous ones. Um, Syntax 2 was also presented, and um, I will uh, come back to that probably on a, on a report tomorrow. But I think the highlight of the day was the result of Cantos. Paul Ritka, who has been working in the field of um, information and coronary artery disease for many, many years, and was a promoter of uh, C-related protein as a marker of cardiovascular risk, uh, conducted this very large study in over 10,000 patients who had a previous MI, whose cholesterol was not very high because they were receiving uh, high-intensity statin treatment, but the CRP remained elevated. So those patients were entered into a randomized study um, with the use of a compound, canakinumab, which is an interleukin-1 beta blocker, and the results were very interesting because this anti-inflammatory intervention without affecting lipids reduced um, the primary and secondary endpoint, which included um, cardiovascular death and major cardiovascular events. And the other also very, very important finding of the study is that there was a 50% reduction in the incidence of cancer which means that tackling inflammation is likely to affect not only the coronary circulation, but also other uh, conditions which are triggered by inflammation. So a, a, very important, a very important study. Of course, it's too early to say that this will change practice, but at least we are seeing for the first time um, that the management of inflammation can improve um, cardiovascular outcomes.